it's Rita with Everything Homemade and I am going to show you what I do to cure or age cheese and this was a question that a lot of people asked me when I first put out the series on how to make cheddar cheese and at that point in time we were just eating the cheese basically fresh as I made it but since we have a milk cow on that produces a lot of milk I now can make cheese that I that we can eat fresh but also store so how do you store your cheese or how do you get it ready for storage is what I'm going to talk about today I'm not going to tell you how to make cheddar cheese I've done that already in another segment which you can see at the end of the video I'll link the playlist to that and you can definitely watch that particular series but after all your hard work on making this beautiful block of cheese what do you do and that's what I'm going to answer today. Let's start by saying that I'm an author. So if you really like drama, action, romance, then check out my books at the end of this video. All the links are in the description box below and you can check them out. I also have an author email address that you can shoot me off an email if you'd like to become part of my book list. You'll get a notification every time a new book is released. So when it comes to curing, the most important part that you need to understand is that your cheese needs to dry out. And this is critical in the curing or aging process. So what I have for you is I actually made two blocks of cheese. One will be three and a half pound block. The other one is much, much smaller. It would be more like your 300 gram block um, cheese. So I'm going to talk about both, but then I'm going to show you examples on what a fresh block looks like and what a cured block looks like after seven days and then almost a cured block about 10 to 13 days after. I'll also show you what happens when you don't cure it properly, what it looks like in a package. I like doing stuff simple, so I don't like to have a lot of, I like to do stuff the most simplest way to get the best results. I don't have a lot of time to fool around with, with waxes and proper humidity and having a cheese cave. I don't have the time, let's just face it, I have six kids, I run my own business, I'm a homeschooling mom. I. I do home, I do, I live on a farm, um, so there's lots of critics to take care of. I also do, do YouTube, and I do so, I'm also an author, like it just keeps going on and on and on, and I gotta fit this all into my day. And I don't got time to fool around with all the nitpicky stuff that cheese making has to do, but you don't have to is what I'm saying, you don't have to. There is a simple way to do it and and mine is just using the regular fridge that everybody has. You can cure your cheese in there. So, no fancy ordering, no fancy tools. Most people will have everything they need to cure their cheese right in their home and I'm gonna show you a couple different methods and you'll be blown away on how easy it is to get a beautiful cure on your cheese. So the very first thing is that I have my two cheese presses right here. In this one here there's less weight and I have my smaller block in and this one here that has over 90 pounds of weight on it is my much bigger block, the three and a half pounder. So I'm going to remove the weights, take out my fresh cheese and show you what it looks like. Okay, so let's open up these blocks. Now this is the follower, so I'm gonna pop that off. Now at this point, this cheesecloth is a little bit damp. This has been pressing for about 36 hours. So I'm gonna pop this one, I'm just gonna pull on the cheesecloth and pop it out just like that and set that aside. So you can see how beautiful that this looks. When you touch it, you can feel the moisture. You can also feel it's spongy. 
so on each side but it holds really good together my hands have that have that moisture and that's what you need to get rid of when you're curing and aging so I'm just going to put this one on the plate for the moment and just set it aside next I'm going to grab the smaller version of it now you'll notice that there's herbs in this particular one I love making different flavors it's the spice of life isn't it so this one's a much smaller um, cheese block like I said it is right you can definitely see and um, but it's the same thing it's moist it holds together well but you also need to age this so I'm going to set this on the plate so now you can definitely see the size difference between the two cheeses so let's take a close-up look at it look at the color pay attention to the color it's going to be critical here you see how how white it is this is what fresh cheese looks like again when you touch it it's a bit moist so if I put a little bit of pressure you can actually feel the the wetness of it and that's okay now there's lots of the way is out but you always retain some and that's what you need to um, air dry it out and same with this one here look at the beautiful white color and it's really important because the curing of it I tell by the color of the cheese so this is what it looks like when it's fresh so let's set these two aside and I'm gonna go over uh, the color first and then I'm gonna sh show you how and what you need to to have when you cure it so let's take a look at this one here this one's been curing for seven days and let's just do a comparison side by side here with a fresh cheese now I'm gonna hold the fresh one on a plate because it is a bit moist so take a look at the different color it has nothing to do with what these are flavored um, with this one's sweet basil right and this one here is black peppercorn that has no factor the factor is the drying out you see how white this one is that's really fresh and you see this one that has seven days um, and and has a really nice crust like I can I can knock on it but when you press on you can feel that sponginess to it you can also see if you look closely there's some cracks happening and that is a really good indication of a really nice dry now it doesn't mean that the inside is dry at all this crust actually protects it now I don't use any wax or anything I naturally dry out my cheese and I do this in the fridge so let's take a look at the at a one that is 10 days from curing and again you got this beautiful um, hard um, outer layer you got a little bit of cracking which is fine you flip it over again it's hard but it's not it's it's just so beautiful and again that color right you see that color difference look at that it is such dramatic difference in color and you're looking for this yellowish hue I'm not using anything to color my cheeses so if you are using it I'm not too sure what what color you're looking for because I'm just going all natural here and this is a cheese block that would be a cheddar, um, between a cheddar cheese and a Havarti so this is a beautiful looking cheese and this one would be ready to be um, sealed up and ready for long-term storage so how do you get to this point it's very simple so the first thing you need to do is have your fresh block of cheese that's a given the next part is you need a plate everybody has a plate okay the next thing you have is a couple of options here one you can use a wire wire cooling rack and that's what I use I actually order these ones this is a nine and a half inches in diameter and I order these off of Amazon they're like $6.99 so I have four or five of these because sometimes I have four or five blocks in concession of um, being dried at the same time so I order these so again a very cheap cheap thing to buy what if you don't have one of these well the other thing you can do is on these blocks you can take your cheese block off and you can put some knives and as a cooling rack replacement just like that and then 
you place your cheese on top. Look at that. The, the biggest thing is, is what you want to do is lift your cheese up so that air circulation can come underneath and on top. That is the key. So if you don't have it, what happens is, is that it condensates underneath and you end up with this condensation where you got to lift up your cheese, wipe it, and you can, you know, grow mold. But if you have proper air circulation, just lifting it up, no problem that everything cures and, and, and it cures evenly at the same time. Okay, so how simple is that? If you can have some bread knives and a plate, you can cure cheese. So what I want to do, what I like doing is I obviously have a cooling rack that I use just for cheese. And I really stress that because everything I use for cheese is just for cheese. So it doesn't go, doesn't get cross contaminated with anything else. I put my cheese on top and I put it in the fridge. How simple is that? Just your fridge. I put it in the back of the fridge and then after 24 hours, I will flip the cheese over. Okay. If you don't flip your cheese, your cheese then will settle in these wires and will look something like this. It will actually dig in. After 24 hours, you'll get you'll get a really nice crust and you can see the and you can see the wires on this one. I can, I hope you can. They're pretty faint, but because I flipped it in time, it didn't settle into it. So you just need to flip it after 24 hours. After that, I don't even flip it at all. I just forget about it for about 10 days. And then you end up with a beautiful cheese. So you tell me how simple that is. What you're looking for is just that beautiful crust, that beautiful yellow glow. That that and when you feel it, there's no moisture, it holds its shape. If you press on it, if you press on it, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, that's what you're looking for. Now, same thing with the smaller block. Let's talk about a smaller block for a moment. You want to do the exact same thing. So you want to take um, some knives and do the exact same thing. Now you would only need two for the small one. I'm just kind of balance it. There we go. Put it on there just like that. Turn it after 24 hours. But the curing time is going to be much less. For these small blocks, three days and it's all done. Again, turn it after 24 hours because you'll have that nice crust on it and then leave it in the fridge for three days and you're good to go. With the big guys, at least 10 days. And if you have a rack, then use the rack, just like that, same, same thing. I mean, if there's something else in your house that, that will work, definitely use it. But just remember, I like using stainless steel. Use something you can clean. Don't use plastics um, or anything corrosive, anything like that. So you want to use something that's really food grade, grade safe. And that's, that's how simple it is. And then you achieve a beautiful, beautiful cheese. Now, what if you don't let your cheese cure? What, what if you just leave it like this and package it up? Well, you get this really kind of sour aftertaste because of the way. The other thing is, is when you want to package it up, um, I vacuum seal all my cheeses. And this is what happens when you don't cure properly. It basically kind of starts flattening out after. So you want it to retain this really nice circle. And what happens if you don't cure, the, the, the cheese you know, I cured this one for four days and it obviously, um, I wanted it to be an example. So I cured it for four days, put it in the fridge, vacuum sealed it. And it has been in the, it is October 6th. So it's been in the fridge for a month and look at what happened, right? It kind of goes out of shape. And that is just because it didn't have enough and you have enough cure and you can see the color difference. So you're really looking for this yellowish, um, color. The one that says, yes, I'm going to hold together. That's what you want. So when, when you cut this open, you can actually eat this. This is totally edible. And, and uh, it's beautiful cheese. Absolutely beautiful cheese. So that is the biggest um, 
tricks and hints that I can tell you with curing cheese in the most simplest way without brining it, without having a cheesecake, uh, without having a cheese cave, checking humidity, um, all that kind of stuff. I haven't grown mold with this method at all and it comes down to salt content as well. So let's just talk about that while I'm thinking about it actually is these bigger blocks are um, three gallons of milk goes into these blocks and I am using a tablespoon of salt per gallon of milk and my cow has really high fat content so for example if I take a cup of cream heavy cream and whip it to whipped cream it'll whip to four cups of whipped cream which is over double so she has unbelievable amount of fat in her milk so when I made these cheeses right here these two blocks at the same time this was from three gallons of milk so I got a 3.5 pound block and about a 30 gram block and I have this little one because these curds didn't fit into my form so I have also a smaller form but that's that's she's just so awesome where I can have less is more with her she, she just has so much milk fat and it, it just it just makes such a delicious cheese so but the ratio that I use is one tablespoon to a gallon of milk and that seems to also prevent any mold from growing like when I start curing and putting this in the fridge for the big ones for you know 10 days let's say 14 days um, there's never mold growing on them and same with the packaging like I don't have even if they blow their their, their seal or or stretch there's not mold growing they're still totally edible and this is totally edible completely edible cheese even though it kind of mushroomed out didn't really hold its form so the next step in the whole curing process is storing your cheese now I'm very simple I don't store in a brine or with wax again I just use my vacuum sealer um, that that simple I just vacuum seal all my cheeses and it works out great and if you have a nice um, cure on it it will keep its shape just like that in a vacuum seal play with it a bit because let's say your fridge is maybe a little bit warmer than mine or cooler than mine or your humidity is a little bit different just check but use the, the your your feel use your eyes and see the difference in color and just experiment a little bit I usually package mine between 10 and 14 days to to cure the big blocks I package mine at about three days at when they're the little tiny blocks and I have great success so when our cow dries up we have cheese through that lull that she's dry and it's wonderful absolutely wonderful so if you have any questions on this process let me know now I haven't done stuff with waxing or fiddled with all the fancy instruments that you can use for cheese making I like keeping it simple so this process works really good for me and to be able to make fresh cheese for the family is completely rewarding. It also makes one of the best gifts because when people know you can make cheese and it's creamy and rich and full of flavor, it makes the greatest presents ever. So it's, it's um, been a pleasure to really perfect this method and to bring to you something that is simple for everyday busy people that want to just make cheese, cure it, age it, and love eating it. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.